2020 was undoubtedly one of the most challenging years in recent time. In addition to all craziness happened last year, Atlantic hurricane season has broken two long-standing records. 2020 was the most active hurricane season on record with 29 storms, and the previous first place position was 2005 with 28 storms and hurricanes. Hurricanes and hail caused damage, and in 2017, three storms in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, Hurricane Harvey, Irma, and Maria, together took more than 300 lives and caused damage totaling $450 billion, making it the costliest Atlantic hurricane season ever. $450 billion more than the GDP of countries like New Zealand and Greece combined. And in 2005, a single storm Hurricane Katrina caused damage of $170 billion, and that's more than the GDP of wealthy countries like Qatar and Oman. In just 10 years, more than a trillion dollars were spent on the damages because of hurricanes, tornadoes, and wildfires in the US alone. Well, the scientific term for hurricanes is a tropical cyclone, and the name itself varies depending on the location, but they are basically the same thing. Every year, thousands of people and hundreds of billions of dollars are lost by cyclones in the Indian Ocean, typhoons in the Pacific, and hurricanes in the Atlantic. And the questions are, can we stop this deadly phenomenon from happening again with geoengineering, and why there are no hurricanes in Europe and in the west coast of the US? Well, let's first Let's briefly look at how hurricanes form. A hurricane starts with a warm water near the equator, and hurricanes typically form in tropical regions where the ocean is at least 26 degrees Celsius. These warm waters evaporate, creating warm, moist air, which acts as a fuel for the storm. The wind is also needed for a hurricane to form, and it causes even more of the warm water to evaporate into the air. The warm, moist air then rises high into the atmosphere, where it begins to cool. Way up there, the water vapor condenses back into the liquid water droplets. Water droplets in the atmosphere form clouds, including big, stormy cumulonimbus clouds. As the warm air continues rising, upward, the winds begin blowing in a circular pattern around a center. The spiraling winds gather up a cluster of big thunderstorm clouds, and thunderstorms continue to grow and begin to rotate thanks to Earth's Coriolis effect. Once the spinning winds reach 74 miles per hour, the storm has officially become a hurricane and carried west by the trade winds. So they hit continents on their east coast at low latitudes, which means primarily east coasts of North America, Asia, Africa, and the Bay of Bengal. Once a hurricane hits land, it runs out of warm, moist air and its winds begin to weaken. And you might be thinking why hurricanes appear in the first place. Well, it's again because of the weather phenomenon Coriolis effect. Coriolis is a pretty weird phenomenon, and the cause is simple. Different parts of the Earth move at different speeds. The wind is created by the rushing of air from high pressure to low pressure. The more significant the pressure difference, the faster the wind curves. Between these points is a straight line. However, due to Earth's rotation, the wind is deflected and curves, giving us the Coriolis effect. Our first question is, tropical cyclones hit and break havoc in East and South Asia and North America, but why they don't hit Europe or South America and the whole west coast of the US? First of all, South America, which despite having access to the hurricane-prone Caribbean Sea, hardly ever gets affected by these storms. It's due to the general movements of hurricanes from east to west and their curvature to the north and northeast. Any Atlantic storm either parallels the northern coast or moves away. Further south, the South Atlantic is too cold to sustain hurricane development because of Antarctica, as warm water is basically a fuel to hurricanes. And of course, Europe has not yet seen a visit of a fully grown tropical system because Europe's geography blesses it. There was a tropical depression in Spain back in 2003, and while highly unusual, it was far from being a hurricane with its 30 miles per hour winds. Everything else the Atlantic throws at Europe in this regard is tropical systems that became extratropical storms, remnants of full hurricanes, and tropically reinforced gales. Europe is just too close to the jet stream for such storm to remain intact, especially in fall, when they get the recurve to the north east more. You might be thinking about the Mediterranean, which its waters are not that cold. 
In fact, the Mediterranean Sea is a breeding ground of storms. Still, the individual basin of this inland sea is too small for developing tropical storms, and the waters are only marginally warm enough to sustain such storms. But Europe occasionally do get so-called medicanes. Medicanes are hybrid storms, far less dangerous than hurricanes. Over the warm waters of the Mediterranean, reaching about 27 degrees Celsius in September for a max, these low attain specific tropical characteristics and superficially look like a small hurricane. They can pack a quite a punch and often bring heavy rains, but they are by no means hurricanes. And our next question, which is very imperative, is how to stop tropical cyclones from happening. One of the most thought out options is dropping a nuclear bomb on hurricanes to blow them away. I personally call it the American way. This option is asked so much in the US that the National Ocean and Atmospheric Administration made a dedicated web page to let people know that it's not entirely a good idea. Well, the amount of energy generated by a fully developed hurricane is roughly equivalent to a 10 megaton bomb going off every 20 minutes. That's the heat output alone. The blast would disperse air in the storm, making the barometric pressure drop, making the storm worse. It also might bring a nuclear fallout. This is not a favorable option. Another hypothetical method is tossing an iceberg to the center of the hurricane. As warm waters are the fuel of the storms, cooling it off with an iceberg can momentarily stop the hurricane. But while no one has tried to haul an iceberg from the cold Arctic or Antarctica to the Caribbean region, its logistics alone makes it almost impossible. There have been a lot of thoughts and even attempts to tugging the iceberg to the coast of Africa or the Middle East as a fresh supply of water, but it never worked out. Tossing an iceberg might hypothetically work, but its logistics is impractical. Engineers have suggested another option to cool off warm surface waters by pumping cold deep sea water to the surface. Even Bill Gates has actually put serious consideration and funding to this option. The plan is to float thousands of tire-like rings in the tropical Atlantic, and they are connected to giant tubes that suck warm surface waters down into deeper seafloor to be replaced by cold water from below. If it's impossible to cut down the fuel source and cool off ocean waters, there is another option to tackle tropical cyclones directly. It's by throwing black dust to the eye of the hurricane. The Journal of Applied Meteorology published a theory for stopping hurricanes using black carbon. Black carbon is byproduct of burnt fossil fuels. The idea is to dump tons of carbon dust into the hurricane wall and it will start increasing the amount of heat it absorbs from the sun. The black particles would hold heat better than the clear water. So the theory behind this option is that tossing black carbon along the storm's eye wall, it could cause it to artificially collapse as it became too warm too quickly and tore itself apart. The cost of this project is estimated to be less than $5 million, which is a very good deal as compared to hundreds of billions of dollars damages caused by hurricanes. This option is very promising, but the lack of practical proof and the general skepticism totally blocks its use because environmental impacts of tinkering with deadly weather phenomenon are high-risk matter. In fact, in 1947, the US government tried to stop a Hurricane King with a project named Storm Fury. When the storm had clipped Florida and heading towards the northeast, meteorologists of that time did an experiment dropping 82 kilograms of dry ice to the hurricane eye wall, and they immediately noticed changes in the clouds. Unfortunately, the hurricane made a U-turn back to the coast and devastated Georgia. After that incident, the public blamed the project, budget cuts followed, and public stigma ended the weather-altering systems in 1971. And since then, Scientists are very careful about experimenting with hurricanes. Professor Mark Jacobson of Stanford University came up with one of the best and less risky methods to tackle hurricanes. They run simulations of the biggest hurricanes in recent years with giant offshore wind farms strung across the path of the storms. And the result was very promising. How this method works is pretty simple. It is by planting offshore wind farms with a huge number of turbines. Around 78,000 of them would be enough to significantly weaken the force of the Category 5 hurricanes. 
A giant wind farm is planted across the path of the hurricanes in the tropical Atlantic or Gulf of Mexico. As the hurricane approaches the wind farm, the spinning turbine blades hinder and slow down the rotating winds in the outer parts of the storm. This reduces the height of the sea waves beneath the outer parts of the storm, which slows the movement of air towards the center of the hurricane. This results in a rise in atmospheric pressure at the center, reducing the pressure differential across the storm, slowing wind speeds throughout and dissipating the hurricane faster. As an extra bonus, a huge number of clean power is generated by turbines. As global warming is accelerating year by year, water temperatures will increase accordingly, making hurricanes even more frequent, intensive and deadly. If countries in North America, East Asia, South Asia will not come up with a solution to tackle hurricanes, they will pay trillions of dollars in damages to the infrastructure and even Europe might finally experience full-on hurricanes. That's pretty much it. What do you think about these methods? And I personally like the building wind farms offshore and at least it weakens hurricanes significantly lowering damages. Which one do you like it most? Let me know in the comment section below. And thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button just so YouTube algorithm knows the video exists. It helps the channel and the people who are looking for answers to interesting questions.